Here's your word for the day from Calvary in Lake Havasu. Visit us on the web at calvaryaz.com. Good morning, Calvary. Pastor Chad here with your word for the day. And we are continuing our look at Advent, at the Christmas season, the season of expectation and hope uh, of the coming of Messiah. And we kicked that off yesterday. And I get to continue in Genesis 22. Now, if you're not familiar with Genesis 22, it is one of the most dramatic stories of obedience in the Bible. So let me just catch you up with it. Abraham is God's chosen for a nation, and God's already promised to bless the whole world through Abraham. And, uh, but he doesn't have an heir. He and his wife are childless until he's very, very old, and God gives them uh, a son that he calls Isaac. And uh, Isaac matures, he gets older, uh, he's probably a child of six to ten years old. And God asks Abraham to go to a mountain, which is eventually be the mountain that the temple is on, uh, and sacrifice his son. Now, this is before there's all the prohibitions about child sacrifice, animal sacrifice, or, or people sacrifice. And, uh, and so Abraham hears clearly from God, and he acts on it. And, of course, Hebrews tells us that you know, Abraham believed God could raise Isaac from the dead, so he's trusting God with his actions. He doesn't understand them, he doesn't like them, but he's trusting God in obedience. And so he goes to uh, the mountain and he takes Isaac up there and he lays him out on the altar, ties him up, and is getting ready to sacrifice him. And God interrupts Abraham and stops him from, you know, killing his son and instead provides a ram that is caught in the thicket. Abraham goes over, takes the ram. Uh, undoes Isaac, ties up the ram, kills the ram as the sacrifice. And here's what God says in verse 15 of Genesis 22. And this is about Christmas. So this is what we're leaning into. And the angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time from heaven and said, by myself I have sworn, declares the Lord, because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will surely bless you. And I will surely multiply your offspring as the stars of heaven and as the sand that is on the seashore, and your offspring shall possess the gate of his enemies. And in your offspring shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because you have obeyed my voice. Now, the prophecy about Jesus is wrapped up in that verse 18. All the nations of the world will be blessed through your offspring. And who is that offspring? That offspring is God's one and only son that comes into this world, uh, child of Mary, uh, Joseph his stepdad, and he's born to be our savior, to give his life on the cross for our sins. And through Abraham's offspring, Jesus, salvation is available not just to the Jews, but to the Gentiles, and, and the gospel has spread. Now there's you know, over 2 billion proclaimed Christians in this world, so more than the sand of the seashore, if you will. But think about this, because this is what amazes me. God prevented Abraham from sacrificing his one and only son. And yet God chose to sacrifice his one and only son to save us from hell. Isn't that amazing? That God did what he wouldn't require us to do so that we could become children of the living God, so that we could know him and be forgiven and live eternity, live for all eternity with God in heaven. So on that news, I pray that you would celebrate, that you would live in gratitude, and you would obey God at every point he asks you to that's revealed in the word of God. Hope that helps, and I hope you have a great day.